morning everyone um, and today we're fishing for salmon in Denmark we're on the river store we've seen a few fish already it's early morning and uh, we have well, the water not completely to ourselves but um, but there's not much uh, many people at the water water condition looks absolutely amazing the water temperature is, is great as well the conditions are good now it's just a matter of <laughs> how skilled are we are we able to catch them because well, conditions are great, so here it goes. In this video, I'm gonna tell you 10 of, of, of our favorite and best tricks to fishing for the Danish salmon. The Danish salmon fishing is really awesome, really exciting, and the, the stocks of Danish salmon has increased uh, in the past years. Um, as, as one of the only places in Europe that, that has that. Um, so, so if you haven't gone here uh, to fish for salmon and, and you love salmon, I would urge you to come um, and, and visit us uh, because we have some unique fishing here. Um, as I said, this is a video about the top 10 best tricks for fishing in Denmark and the first one I'm gonna give you here now. The first trick is that you learn the rules of the particular water that you're gonna fish. Because um, it, it doesn't matter if you're fishing in Denmark or Norway or Sweden or Iceland or whatever. Whenever you're fishing for salmon, there's gonna be some regulations, there's gonna be some restrictions. And the most important things before you, you actually start your fishing is to learn those rules. Here in Denmark, we have some, some, uh, some requirements to hook size. We only fish bartless and stuff like that. And, and to get and to know and, and to uh, adhere to the local rules regarding salmon fishing is, is an absolute must. So the first, the first tip uh, in this video is learn the local rules and be very, very thorough um, and, uh, and really, really know exactly what you're doing when you're doing it. So take care of the rules. That is tip number one. Tip number two, um, do your best to, uh, to simply uh, behave at the water. Uh, take great care to look and, and to see if there are other anglers on the water and then ask before you start your fishing. If you see someone that is fishing, you know, maybe a, a, a stretch behind you, then ask them if it's okay that you start your fishing, let's say 100 meters in front of them or, or something like that. But, but um, simply just uh, show that you care show that uh, show that that uh, that that they're fishing and and that your fellow angler is uh, uh, is important to you by actually uh, by actually being polite um, and uh, and and when you do that you will often see that that some of the local fishermen that 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 uh, that really knows the water are much eager to talk to you if you're actually just yeah is, is civil and and nice um, um, and then they can uh, they can probably uh, or will probably uh, there's a bigger chance at least that they will share some of the secrets and some of the spots and some of the flies that is particularly good for for that water so when you go fishing for salmon take care to uh, to watch where you're going watch where your uh, other the the the, the co-fishermen the co-anglers uh, are fishing and then take great care not to annoy or to 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 fish in their waters. Tip number three. Uh, for me, uh, that is uh, this this net to have a net of uh, of, of the right size um, here in Denmark there's a lot of restriction on on how to fish for salmon and uh, and and what you're allowed to kill and keep and uh, and thus just this year um, there's a new rule that you're not allowed to lift a fish out of the water uh, unless it's it's uh, of course a fish that that you are allowed to kill um, and basically to have a proper net for a landing net for for these big big fish is just it's just so key also in uh, in a good release this is the Megalene 3x um, and it is the best salmon net I have ever tried it has a rubber uh, net uh, as well uh, which is really really nice for for uh, for catch and release and basically this is just so big that you are able to to uh, to easily land even the biggest of salmon there can easily be a 20 kilo fish in here and let's face it the fish we're fishing for is basically the biggest salmon that we can get um, so this is also ideal for Norway and for everywhere there is salmon fishing. Uh, I would I would 
definitely bring this net. Uh, I mean, of course, this is not going to be something you can fly with, but but if you're if you're driving anywhere uh, fishing for salmon, then bring this net, the 3XL from McLean. Perfect, ideal for for all your all your catch and release of of salmon. Tip number four, when you're fishing the Danish rivers or rivers in general and you see something like this where the, uh, the weeds has really been, 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 been mangled and, and just, just cleared all the way out to the water, it's because that a fish has been landed here. So take great notice of this because a fish has been landed here, which means that in this area out here there's going to be fish and there's going to be fish that's active and, and there's going to be a, a holding spot out here where the fish will actually grab a fly or, or a lure or whatever. So if you see places like this, um, it's, an, it's a very clear indication that here has been landed a fish, then you should intensify your fishing in that area. Tip number five is basically remember to uh, remember to enjoy yourself and uh, and and most importantly remember to take some breaks. Salmon fishing can be grueling and can't be a grind and can be a lot of things. But um, what I've found, and I've made a whole video about this on, on how I became for real a, a salmon fisherman that's called on, on salmon and, and becoming a Labrador. And if you haven't watched that one, I urge you to do that. If you just search for Labrador and salmon, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn up. Um, and, uh, and that is probably the most important lesson I've ever learned about salmon fishing is if you stress, if, you, if, you, if you're too intense, if you, if you basically just fish yourself halfway to death, then you're not going to find any salmon. So, take care, relax, enjoy yourself, enjoy the surroundings, and, uh, and every now and then, just sit down, take five minutes break, and, and just look at the water. That will help you immensely, and that will make you a way, way better salmon fisherman. So, tip number five, enjoy the life, enjoy the fishing, and relax while you do it. Trick number six, and that is basically learn some water and uh, and and get to know some water, and then concentrate your fishing on that. Um, this stretch out here is uh, is one of the stretches of, of Danish salmon water that I fished the most. It's and it's it's also one of the uh, accidentally also one of the stretches that I've ca caught the most salmon on, which is 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 not a, is is not an accident at all. Because um, basically, um, if you just every time you go fishing, you you try out some new water, and then you fish for ten kilometers and and or five kilometers or whatever, and then new water, then new water, and then, then new water, then you'll never ever get to know that water and it's first when you get to know some some stretches of water that you can you can basically optimize your fishing and you can catch a lot more fish so when you're on the water decide on a stretch of water that you know actually contains salmon and has some some very fairly regular uh, catches of salmon and then and then spend a lot of time on that water Notice where, wherever you see a fish, uh, you know, splash in the surface or jump. Notice when you have where you have a hookup. Notice where other people catches uh, a salmon, and and in that in that way you will you will fish some water a lot of times. Also, just you know, basically have your fly fly bounce off the bottom to know exactly. Okay, here's going to be some kind of uh, some kind of uh, of a thing on the bottom that means probably a salmon can can rest in front of it or, or whatever. But learn a stretch of water and fish that many times instead of basically just fishing as much water as possible. Um, this stretch of water here is really really good. At least it's, it's for me it's, it's been very productive. So in a day's fishing I have maybe 10 kilometers I could potentially fish here. 
but I would much rather fish this stretch that is maybe 300 meters long. I would rather fish that three times than fish or maybe five or six kilometers just, just down because I know exactly where the fish should be here. And, uh, and, and with salmon, you always have the chance of a new uh, salmon arriving in the river and, and, and taking one of the spots. And, and it's a, there's a much bigger chance of me catching one of those salmon than accidentally stumbling onto uh, to a salmon in stretches of water that I don't know. Of course, when you have a lot of experience, you will be faster at learning new water and, and, and knowing new water and, and to, to see exactly where the salmon will be on new water. But you will only ever get that experience if you fish and if you catch some salmon. So the more salmon you catch, the more experience you will get. And the easiest way to get as much experience as possible is to fish the same stretch of water, learn that very thoroughly, and then take your experiences from that and apply it to other places as well. So trick number five is learn some water, fish that water until you are familiar with it, take the experiences from that and apply it to other places. When fishing for salmon, there is a few things that I would never leave, ho leave home without. Um, and, uh, and those simply just make your, your fishing so much easier. The first thing is, is a good pair of pliers. It's a good pair of, uh, of pliers because you need to debarb all of your hooks uh, uh, to fish with, uh, with, uh, with Bartlett's hook, uh, at least here in Denmark. It's also nice, you know, for, for, uh, for removing the hook from, from a fish. And, uh, and in this, there's a line cutter as well. So basically, you have everything you need in, in, in this. This is a loon one, but you can get whatever. Just bring one of these. It's, these are very important. I also always carry with me a pair of, of good uh, nippers to cut all my, my leaders and stuff. The Sims one here, uh, I think this is the guide, but I can't remember if this is the guide or whatever model this is. And, but I have it in the Sims Singer as well. That, that, that just works out really well for me. Um, also, I always carry with me a pair of polarized sunglasses, both because um, you will just observe and see so much more. They're very nice to wear with summer conditions like these, but also they protect your eyes from, uh, from these very heavy flies uh, that we use, um, should one of them stray in, in a cast, because there, there can be quite a lot of wind out here uh, in, in the western part of, uh, of Denmark. So, so a nice pair of polarized sunglasses. I have, a pair from, I have two pairs from Smith. Uh, which I am really, really uh, fond of and, and have used for a long time. But I've also recently just bought me a pair of these. These are Baio, a new American brand. Um, and, uh, and I'm quite impressed with these as well. They, they, they have a very, very nice fit. They, they, they suit my, <laughs> they, they, they slip on my face really well. And, and they completely block out all sun from, from the sides and stuff. So Baio is, uh, is cool as well. Oh, I love my fish pond vest, uh, fishing vest as well. The check vest here is, is nice, but yeah, that's just, yeah. You can do whatever if you want a sling pack or a backpack or whatever, you, you, you go with the flow in that regards. I just, since I got this, I basically use this for all my fishing. It's just very nice. Um, and uh, another thing that I've just recently tried out that I haven't done before is these. These are uh, Sims Freestone uh, hip waders, waist waders. Basically, they, they fit you like like a pair of pants. So in the in the when you're when you're fishing in the summertime, basically you have two big pockets as well. And there is a, there is a belt here, but but basically you don't have to have the upper part of your body covered in in really heavy waders as well. So when it's when it's when the conditions are warm and stuff, these are really nice. Oh, did you get that? <laughs> did you see the the butterfly? No, I didn't. What? Oh no. Okay. Um, but really nice um, and uh, and not as warm as as as, as the as the normal waders. So these are gonna be my summer my summer outfit for now. Tip number eight um, is in regard to the in regards to the Danish salmon flies. Um, I have here five of my absolute favorites. Uh, these are the uh, Astrid, the Tilda, the French Easy, the uh, Court Gesture, and then the uh, Horst Sock. Um, 
these are five patterns that I've had a lot of success, success with and uh, and a lot of people have you know contacted me with uh, with with their success stories regarding these patterns as well so these are very very proven patterns they are absolutely awesome for the Danish fishing and uh, with those you you can be you can be fairly certain that that you're, you're you at least have your your fly covered when it when it comes to to a, to a pattern that will attract the the, the salmon um one thing you can say about the flies just a, just a quick rule of thumb is um the warmer the water the smaller the fly and uh, and the warmer the water the faster you can fish the fly so it's if it's really really early and cold water then bigger flies and and slower slower retrieve if it's uh, summer times like now then smaller flies and uh, and and you see some of these are really 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 quite small all of these are weighted that's important as well because you want your fly to to be down and deep and uh, make sure that you're always fishing with a fresh hook um, sometimes you'll hit the bottom and get snacks and stuff and if the hook is, is not 100% then I change it basically because um, there is fairly far between uh, actual salmon strikes so when you get a salmon strike you want to be sure that the salmon uh, th th that you have as big a chance as possible to uh, to hook the fish I always use swing tubes uh, for my connection and then basically just leave the hook hanging in the swing tube free on the on the leader and I always carry with me some uh, some propellers as well for uh, for if, if the water is murky and stuff then these can can really really uh, Do the trick at least it, it feels like it. I, I believe in them <laughs> But basically that's trick number eight fish the flies you believe in uh, Here is five patterns that you can use if 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 you don't have any favorites yet um, basically, that's it for the flight. Tip number nine is basically um, when you have learned the water, uh, get, getting to know the water and all that sort of things, then you will see there is a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things going on throughout a salmon season. Uh, when you go to Norway or when you come here, it's 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 very it's a very very good idea to bring more than one set of lines. Um, uh, I have more than one setup for every one of my rods. Uh, for this one, I have three different ones, for instance, so I can change thing up things up and I can make sure that I have exactly the right setup for exactly that water level that that uh, that that is on the the day I'm fishing so so be sure to have more than one setup for instance uh, this is a this is a seven weight but just for this seven weight I have exactly the same line setup in both the seven and also in eight because if I have it both in seven and eight I can fish on on calm days like this and uh, my, my line will not uh, make as much of, of, of a splash when it hits the water and stuff but when it really it's really really windy as it as it tends to be out here uh, uh, in, in the western part of, of, of Denmark then I have an even heavier line a, a line that is on paper too heavy for the rod but basically just to cut better through the wind so having different lines with different densities to in order to optimize your fishing um, depending on the water you're fishing is really really crucial I would never leave home without more than one setup so make sure your lines are, are exactly attuned to the fishing that you're, you're doing and you can do that the best by having more than one setup lines are important Tip number 10 is um, uh, practice, uh, practice and practice some more because um, if you are able to place the fly exactly where you want the fly uh, then you are way way better off than if 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 it's just some some random stuff that 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 you that you're producing the casts are, are random because if you hit exactly the spot where you want the fly to be um, and if you if you if you consider and carefully think about every single place that you put your fly during the day for instance you know oh there's just uh, there's a small uh, something that looks like maybe uh, there's a holding spot out here so i have to place my fly just 
just in front of that and, and so on and so forth. If you, if, you, if you consciously choose where to place your fly every single time you cast, you will catch more fish, you will be a better fly fisherman and, uh, and, uh, and that will count and that does count. Also, um, it's quite crucial to take a look at the setup you have, the gear you have now, and to, to, really, to really see if, if that is um, compatible and if that is optimized. Because we have a lot of customers um, who, who have some gear that maybe you know, they've bought here and there and, 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 and they've, they've, they've just done a lot of things on their own. And, and a lot of times the gear is not ideally suited for one another. The line doesn't fit the rod or, or whatever, or the shooting line is, is, is too thin or, or whatever, whatever may be the case. Then before you go on a fishing trip or, or, or fish for salmon in general, make sure that all of your gear is, is optimized, is tuned and is working well together. Then your chances of success is, is very, very much higher, very, very much bigger. So. Take care of your casting practice and make sure that your, your gear is, is, is working and in optimal condition. That is tip number 10. I think that about covers it, Stephen, don't you? I think so, yeah. yeah. All there's left to say is, um, of course, all the stuff you have seen in this video, they're available at Nordic Anglers, um, our web shop, and we ship worldwide. So um, do not hesitate to order stuff if you need any, or to contact me if, if you want to know more about the Danish uh, salmon fishing. I can I can definitely help you um, setting that up. Otherwise, I just wish you all the best of luck out on the water and uh, and a good summer hope your summer is going to be filled with great great fishing experiences if you haven't tried salmon yet then i urge you wherever you are i urge you to go try fish for salmon because salmon is just pure awesomeness well that's it for now i'm daniel i'm signing off thank you for watching and uh, well good luck out on the water